Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. So I had uh, a couple of comments on my last post. Um, yesterday I posted a video that I found online of somebody hooking up two electrodes to a glass of water and it started creating a whirlpool or an electric vortex in water. And uh, after a few comments, people said, man, I think they reversed this video. So what did I do? I tested the video. I just posted that today, just 28 minutes ago, and I got a couple comments. If you connect those to a magnet at the bottom, it will indeed spin. Um, this person recognized it as a reverse video when I first saw it, but you can make a weak version of it with strong magnet, electrolyte water, and strong current. It will be more like electric propulsion in water. And another comment was, would salt water make a difference? So what I'm going to do is uh, try a magnet in the water with some electrolyte, I'll put some salt in there and uh, see what happens. And if it doesn't work, I'll hook up a magnet. All right, let's try it out. Okay, so here's where I left it. And uh, what I have done is it still has that cerium oxide in the water. But what I did uh, after I was done with that last video was I took some of my Epsom salt crystal that I had made um, a couple of years ago and dissolved it in the water so it now has Epsom salt in there, uh, which is an electrolyte, would make the water way more conductive. Uh, and that little magnet I used to uh, verify my nails were magnetic, I'm gonna just drop this in the water and see, does that make a difference? And after that, maybe I will uh, have the electrodes touching the magnet to see, do I get more of a spin out of the water? Like one of the commenters said. So let's try it out. Uh, what I'll do to start is let's just put this in the water. Let's turn it on. So let's verify. Yep, I've got discharge going through it right now. I'm just going to drop this magnet into the water and see what happens. Does anything happen with a magnet in electrolytic water? And I don't see anything happening except for the oxygen bubbles uh, emanating from the cathode. So I think my next test is to hook up the current to the magnet and do we get a spin from the magnet? All right, let me turn this off and then I'm going to figure out how in the world to do that. All right, so I mixed up the water. I've got the magnet. I think what I'm going to do because I am cheap and I try to find ways to do things without knowing what the heck I'm doing. Because I'm just a guy, I'm, I'm nobody special here. I think what I'll do is take some scotch tape and put it down like that so it's submerged. Oh goodness, okay, that might work. And I'll take another piece of tape and go this way. That way something can hold this little magnet here. Oh, let's see if it stays. All right. And then, oh gosh. Let's try doing this. All right, I think that could work. All right, now, I don't know if anything's gonna happen, but let's try it. I'm gonna turn it on. see that one little dot on the north side moving around. Let's do this. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit more of that cerium oxide on top just so we can see what's going on with the water flow. And is it indeed moving?
Now I'm questioning, does the magnet need to be fully submerged for this to work? Or do I need a bar magnet or a circular magnet versus a sphere magnet? Uh, this sphere does have two poles because I've played with multiple uh, of these little ball magnets before. So there are, there are definitely poles uh, with a kind of a neutral hemisphere. So I don't know which side it's on. That might make a difference. I do have... I do have some pretty serious magnets around here, um, but I moved this year and I'm still unpacking all of my previous equipment that I had. So I've got to do some digging and perhaps I'll try a different magnet. I have a really powerful neodymium magnet. It's a, a cube that I used on uh, an experiment a few years ago to create that crater in clay. So maybe I can find that because I'm not really seeing anything happening from this. Um, you know what? Let's try this. I'm going to turn the power off. Since this magnet's being attracted here, what if I just take this out? Let's remove this. I bet, I bet that will hold in place if I just... That will hold in place. Alright, so now the magnet's fully submerged. Let's get it completely under the water. Now, the top is still poking out barely, but that's good enough for me. Let's turn it on. The cathode's on the left and the anode is on the right. So the only movement I can tell is from the oxygen bubbles coming off of the cathode, uh, which is starting to spin the water, but it's not, uh, it's not very great. Okay. I am going to dig around and see if I can find some alternative magnets to try out and see what I can see. Okay, well, I dug around and I couldn't find any more magnets. However, what I do have is synthetic black iron oxide. So, um, I am going to sprinkle some iron powder in here. And I don't know what's going to happen, but let's find out. And obviously it goes right to the magnet. Not what I was uh, looking for, but interesting that it's collecting over on the anode side. Oh, I'm sorry, on the uh, cathode side. But that's probably also a pole. Let's see what happens if I try to move. Let's see. Probably going to end up demagnetizing this. Now I'm just playing around.
This one down in the water. She's playing around with this now. And it stopped. Now it doesn't want to go. camera will stay still. So, now I really got to find this magnet. So I'm going to come back and uh, see if I can't locate a better magnet than this little ball magnet. All right, so I found this speaker magnet. All right. Uh, it's not a perfect, I don't know. I'd, I'd love to get this piece of metal out of there, but I don't know if I can get it out. You know, let's just try it like we were before and let's attach it to this electrode. I think what I'll do is um, 
Let's see if I can't get it to, is it gonna hold? Let's just see if it will hold. Nope. Well, let's do this. All right, I like this because it's connected to the cathode and I'm just gonna put this, um, the anode in the water and then let's turn it on and see, do we get any kind of spin? Put some more powder on top just to uh, see if there's any actual movement there. All right. And it's not on right now, it's just from me dropping that in there. Let's turn it on. And I'm not really seeing anything fantastic. I can pull that magnet up here. And it's probably too heavy. Oh, yeah, it's too heavy. And I get nothing. All right. It's a pretty heavy sucker. to take, I'm going to see if I can get this metal out of there, because I believe this plate right here should come out, so I'm going to go bang it with the hammer and see if I can get just the magnet. I'll be back. All right, so I got that piece of metal out, so now I've got a ring magnet. There's still metal on that side, but now let's give this one a shot, let's see if I can see a difference. Let's see, how do I want to do this? Is it going to hold in in the water? It is. All right, so let's try this and see if we notice any difference here. The power is on. And I see some rotation around the anode, but I'm not really noticing much else. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. For you commenters out there, uh, if you know a trick, let me know and I'll give it a try. Maybe I will just hook up AC and see if I see a difference. All right, so I've bypassed the bridge rectifier and this is just straight AC, so let's turn it on. And I see nothing. So not sure what, uh, what to do here. or call it a day. All right, guys. I'll be back with something different next time. Toodaloo.